When there is no doctor and help's not coming anytime soon, even basic medical issues can become serious. In day seven of the 521 preparedness plan, we're not gonna waste your time with lists of what all decent first aid kits should already have. We're gonna focus on the items your kit probably doesn't have, but it should. For serious burns, my first go-to is, oddly enough, tofu. I just slice it into strips and place it directly onto the burn. I also keep lavender oil on hand for burns. Another family favorite is the B&W ointment. This is just a salve for burns and wounds, that's why it's B&W, and you just take it and smear it directly on the burn area. Also, local raw honey works wonders for burns. And last but not least is the good old aloe vera plant. Every trauma kit needs a good SWAT T tourniquet. This is the best for stopping bleeding. And then, of course, a pressure dressing is essential for keeping pressure on a wound, helping it to clot, all that sort of thing. Cayenne powder, amazingly enough, can help to stop bleeding. And if you have a really serious emergency bleed that you can't stop any other way, quick clot can be really useful for that. And for closing wounds, liquid skin. When dealing with fevers, everyone needs to have a good thermometer. In our home, we actually don't treat fevers as an enemy. A fever is actually your body's natural process to try and fight diseases. But if it does get to a dangerous high level, you do want to have some way to bring that temperature back down. One way that I do is actually by rubbing peppermint oil on the back. If that doesn't work, you can use cool or tepid baths. And if that doesn't work, then I use ibuprofen to help bring the temperature down. For infections, one of our favorites is tea tree oil. Hydrogen peroxide is the old standby. And then there's charcoal powder. You can do a poultice and it can do amazing things for pulling infection out. Just don't put it on an open wound. Garlic oil is awesome for uh, ear infection and great for other wounds. And salt water rinse is awesome for oral infection. When dealing with colds, there's a few things that we like to personally turn to. First of all, a good quality chest rub really helps to open up the lungs. Also, as a natural decongestant, we like to use a combination of NAC and quercetin. Also, if you're dealing with a sore throat, Combining some local raw honey with a little bit of lemon juice makes a big difference. In our home, we like to use hydrotherapy. It uses contrast between the hot and the cold to help increase circulation in uh, your chest. And last, we like to have a nebulizer on hand. We mix a little bit of this food grade hydrogen peroxide with some water, diluting it down, and then we use that in our nebulizer. If you're prone to allergic reactions, you need to get a prescription from your doctor for an EpiPen and have some on hand. But beyond that, liquid Benadryl is super helpful for kids, pets, even adults for dealing with allergic reactions. And then for bites and things like this, uh, charcoal powder, a poultice on the skin, or this is a charcoal that's kind of like a lip balm that you can smear on your skin for a bite. When dealing with musculoskeletal issues, there's a number of different things you can do depending on what's hurting and where. One of my favorite things would be massage or stretching. Another thing that you can do is a contrast of hot and cold. You just place the muscle or joint into a bucket of hot water for three minutes and then change it over to the cold for 30 seconds. Repeat that three to five times ending on the cold and you'd be surprised at how much better you'll feel. Also, be sure and have a deep blue or tiger balm, something you can rub on that joint or muscle that's hurting. I like to use helichrysum. And last but not least is my favorite, comfrey. If you have the budget for a more advanced solution, you can get into a really complete first aid kit like this Amp3 Outfitter, which is our favorite. It's just super complete and has everything. The other thing I wanted to mention is if you must have any prescription drugs in order to live, you need to have a long supply of them. And if your doctor won't give you that, we have a link in the resources page, the 521 resources page, where you can get a long-term supply of many prescription drugs from a legit American company with doctors on staff. The biggest thing you can do now is to take care of yourself and get into excellent health. 
This means eating a whole foods diet, lots of exercise, minimizing exposure to toxins, detoxing, and drinking lots of water. And be sure to get our list of items by going to thereadylife.com forward slash 521 and we'll see you tomorrow.